Hi guys, it's Lana here. Today I'm going to be talking about how I edit my photos for Instagram and my thumbnails and anywhere where you see content, like my original content that I've shot, produced, I'm just showing you how I've done it. And I think it's especially important to know how to do it during these times of lockdown when we can't go outside so we're having to shoot at home by ourselves and edit by ourselves. Oh my god, I totally forgot to do my thing! Lana summer, summer time! Okay, let's go. <laughs> On my channel I'm usually trying to show hairstyle and makeup looks and things that I've filmed. So for me, I think most of the time it's fine for me to just sit here and show you the hairstyle that I've done. I would love to get more creative with the space that I have, but I'm very limited. So I'm gonna show you my equipment. I'm gonna show you how I take my photos. I'm gonna go through some poses and locations and I'm gonna show you how I edit. So buckle up, don't forget to like this video if you're enjoying it. Also subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications and let's keep it moving, let's get into it. First of all, let's talk about my main camera filming equipment that I'm filming on right now. It doubles up as my main filming camera and my main photography camera. So this is a Canon 760D. I think that translates to like a Canon and T6i or something like that. I don't know why they have different names in American to what they have in English. I'm gonna link all of my equipment down below so you can check it out. And I'm only using the body of that camera. And attached to that, I have a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens. I remember this lens was huge back in the day when there was that boom of lifestyle vloggers with the really blurry background and it everything looked really bright and everything like that. That's when everyone was using this lens and I bought it then and it was expensive. I think it was maybe like 800 pounds back then. I actually had a voucher from YouTube because I won a competition with YouTube. They gave us vouchers to buy equipment with. So it was like the YouTube Next Up program. If I'm not sure if they're still running that program, but I remember I wanted it so bad and eventually I won and it was a really, really cool experience and I'm still friends with everyone that I met. It was really quite a life-changing experience for me to go to YouTube Next Up. Through that, I was able to get the lens, which I think is still about 700 pounds so it's really kind of held its value but that's the lens that I use and I really like this camera because it has a flip out screen so if you ever see me kind of shift my gaze and start looking there it's because there's a viewfinder there like you guys are there but I do sometimes get distracted by what's over here especially if I don't know if I'm in view or if I'm in focus you're gonna want to get a camera with a flip out screen if you are trying to film YouTube videos and it also helps when you're trying to shoot photos by yourself as well but we'll get back to that so what else do I have as my filming setup? I have a tripod right here. This was a good tripod. I will try to link this original tripod. I've had this for the longest time. I think this was maybe the first piece of equipment I ever bought for filming. It's actually broken, so I can't fold it down entirely, but it still works as a tripod. It just means I can't fold it down. This ring light is also really cool. I have, so yeah, I have a ring light in front of me. This is really good at kind of mimicking natural daylight because I have a very dark room. I have a very small window. 12 midday, that's it, done. My dark from 12 midday it's a terrible setup especially for somebody who likes to film youtube videos it means that i have to rely on artificial continuous lighting through a lot of my videos which i don't really like but we move so this is the ring light right here this one is definitely an upgrade to my previous one for instance as well as being able to adjust the height so like having it down here or having it up there i can also adjust the tilt with this one so for instance i might want to have it at all up here but i might want to have it looking down on me so i'd have to tilt the head forward like this I could have it coming down and I could tilt it back so the light is coming up. It also makes it great for things like overlays because I can just tilt the head completely forward and just look down on a flat surface or something like that. So it's really good for that. You can decide whether you want blue light or yellow light and you can adjust the brightness as well. I mean, it's really good, especially if you're trying to film or shoot beauty content. It just rounds off any imperfections. It gives you a really nice glow. Behind me right here, I actually have a soft box light. I used to have two soft box lights, but I realized that they were kind of destroying any shadow, which was making me look really blown out. Shadow actually gives you definition, it gives you contours. So it's important to keep some shadow on your subject. The subject is me right now. You wanna make sure that you're not completely lighting up your subject, otherwise it's gonna start to look really weird. So I have a softbox light behind me and it's not actually casting light on me directly, although you might see a little bit like, you know, bouncing off my shoulder. And I think that's what contributes to the glow that you guys sometimes comment on. You sometimes say that I have a bit of a glow and it's usually from the softbox lighting. And what it's doing is actually lighting up my background just so that everything about the video looks really bright, clean, and great. So that's my softbox over there. Everything is linked below. This is how I shoot everything at home. It's really great because I can just switch on, let's go, start filming. I don't have to worry about the lighting because the light is continuous. I don't have to worry about 
um, it's not in focus or something because I can just look there, I can see that it's in focus. It would be great if I was a bit closer, like I'd love to hook it up to the MacBook or something and be able to see it a bit closer. But you know, for, for this, I just set it and it's, you know, it's got a little square box on my face, so I know it's focusing on my face right now. Next, we're talking about vlogging. What do I use when I'm out and about or just trying to vlog little clips, trying to shoot some B-roll around the house because we are in quarantine or on my daily walk or something like that. What am I using? Sometimes I'll use my phone if I really don't have anything, if I just want to capture something in the moment, I'll use my phone. But if you can use a camera, they really are so much better. So I'm currently using the Canon G7X Mark III. I feel like a lot of people don't even know that the 3 is out yet. I feel like every single vlogger, every single YouTuber ever used the Canon G7X Mark II, which I also have. Okay, so I just ran and grabbed my two. It just died a death. It's quite durable, but not as durable as it needs to be. Like this screen I had to have replaced because it kept falling off and it ended up getting a whole bunch of gunk inside the lens, which was going to be really expensive to repair. So I started looking for a new camera instead. Thankfully, the Mark III came along and you can see they're basically the same camera. Twins. See, look at this one. The lens doesn't even open properly. You have to like push you have to push the eyelids open. <laughs> They're essentially the same camera, same display. Canon responded to the fact that so many vloggers use this one and they actually put specific vlogging functions in this camera. This one starts to use more photography terms. So this one's talking about sharpness and aperture, whereas this one really kind of like dumbs it down and they actually say things like beauty mode and blurred background, yes or no. There's things like aperture to think about that can actually change the, how, the way the background looks. It's not as simple as just saying, blur the background. <laughs> you know, there's like actually photography terms, but this one is basically a vlogger's camera. Now I'm in the vlogging camera, as you can see, it's definitely, I think, beautified a lot of stuff compared to what the other camera did. This one is just nice for carrying around. I think it's got a bit of stabilization built in, which means that you can just sort of go from side to side and it doesn't warple too much. It's a good vlogging camera. Also good for shooting photos on as well, which I never really do because I have this bigger one. But yeah, moving on. The G7X Mark III has almost exactly the same specifications as the Mark II, aside from those software updates that make it a lot more easier for beginners to use. So it's definitely targeted towards vloggers, people who want to make online content, who don't necessarily have the most knowledge about photography and filmography. So if that's something that you're looking to get into, this would be a great camera for you. I will try to leave a link in the description box. I'm not sure if you can even buy this on Amazon. You might need to buy it from where I got it from, which was Jessup which is a camera store in the UK. I don't know if it's also in the US, but it's Canon. So maybe you can get it on the Canon website. <laughs> Moving on to poses and locations. So like I said, I typically am shooting hairstyles and makeup looks. So I think it's fine to just be here, but I do sometimes play with poses. So I did learn a lot from the modeling shoots that I've been on in the past and from watching YouTube videos and learning how to pose and that kind of thing. I'm not like a professional model. I have modeled and I have been paid to model and I have appeared in adverts on TV and in magazine and everywhere. But that's not my main job, so I'm not the best. I feel like when I get bought on as a model, I'm kind of like the influencer model, and there's actually a lot of models who are a lot better at it than me. So just some tips for your face, first of all, to make your face look its best. So first of all, look at my chin right now. My tongue is on the roof of my mouth. Mm-hmm. So check right now, where is your tongue resting? It doesn't rest on the bottom of your mouth. It actually rests on the roof of your mouth. So that's fine, don't try to change that. If anything, push it further into the roof of your mouth. Push your tongue against your teeth if you can. The worst thing to do is to try to push your tongue down onto the bottom of your mouth or try to tuck it back. I don't know why you would do these things, but I've seen people do it. And then when they see the photos of themselves afterwards, they're shocked. Cause look what happens. This is my tongue pointing back. <laughs> no, 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 no. You see how that that's the worst thing you can do. Okay, don't do that. Now, what about your jawline? Imagine you're biting down on something. Bite down normally, but push down hard. You can really define your jaw and this whole area by just clenching down on your teeth. Something else that they recommend that models do is to just take a second to roll your shoulders back, put your chin out and then down. And that should help with your posture and just looking a bit more like natural. And then you end up with this slightly better posture than what we had before. <laughs> Sometimes photographers will tell you up, down, you know, do whatever to the side, what, whatever it may be. You can play with your face, you can vogue it. People are always talking about triangles, you know, just trying to form triangles in your photos. So that is a triangle. There's one here. 
generally just like touching your face or just touching something like it's quite awkward to just leave your hands not doing something like just be like this like unless it's like really cool it's quite hard to make it look natural if you're not touching something sometimes you see people posing in photos and they'll just be holding their coffee cup or you know just holding their phone i think people really like that photo where people take it in front of the mirror and they're holding their phone and taking the photo in front of the mirror because it occupies your hands it gives you something to do you have the model pose which is just basically to be like act like you have a headache you kind of have to make sure that you're already kind of rocking the vibe that you want to rock because i mean it's definitely going to play a part you know if you want your photo to look stylish then you're gonna have to make sure that you're dressed stylishly if you want it to look like a grungy photo then dress grungily do the makeup grungily you know you have to make all of the elements of the photo come together it can't just all depend on the equipment and the pose there's gonna have to be more there to get the effect that you actually want so I want to pause the video right here to take a second and say thank you guys for watching the video first of all and also that I'm really proud of you for clicking on it and wanting to learn a new skill whether it be for social media whether it be because you want to become a photographer an editor something like that learning a new skill is something to be proud of especially in these times that we're currently going through you didn't have to be doing this but you are so well done <laughs> and i thought that you guys might also be interested to know that this video is sponsored by skillshare skillshare is an online learning platform with tons of classes in any area imaginable including photography illustration image editing video editing video shooting and more including business so maybe you want to become a photographer and you want to start a photography business then Skillshare has classes for you. So this video is sponsored by Skillshare and I'm really happy that they decided to do that because it means that I can offer you guys two months of Skillshare for free. So if you want to join this amazing learning community, then the first 500 people to click the link in the description will get two free months of Skillshare. And anyone else who clicks it after that will still be able to get it for less than 10 pounds a month. So it's really a win-win and I really think that you guys are gonna love it. So how do I actually shoot the photos myself i'm usually on self timer if i'm shooting a photo here with this big camera i can just set it to self timer either with a flash without a flash and it will shoot 10 continuous photos i usually do it with a flash just because it gives me a bit more time to pose in between so it'll be like you know like i can do it like this i don't really shoot photos on the vlogging camera like ever and sometimes i obviously take selfies on my phone sometimes a selfie is all you need always make sure your lens is clean i mean i'm on samsung and samsung literally flashes up with a message and it tells you you're gonna get a better photo if you clean the lens and i'm like i'm just trying to find the best light the most flattering angle i mean instagram in particular seems to love the angles like that are coming from lower where you get like the sense of the jawline and whatnot sometimes i smile in my instagram photos so once i have the photos now it's time to start editing them so i put them into my laptop i sound like sort of an old person when i said that i put them in my lap no i transport them to my laptop i had a few questions about what i edit on and i edit everything on a macbook pro you know i'm such a youtube geek i use final cut to edit my videos final cut pro and i actually don't have any photo editing software installed on my laptop i don't have any subscriptions to photo editors which i think might be surprising to a lot of people i mean this might be music to some of your ears but i just like to do things for free where i can and i feel like there's so many free photo editing apps on your phone and on desktop that do a really good job i mean i'm not trying to do anything crazy i'm not trying to do like magazine spreads and stuff like that i'm really just trying to make youtube thumbnails and post on instagram these do the trick for me so then what i do is i I transfer the photos that I want from my laptop to my phone for editing. This is going to come as no surprise to many of you seeing as this is kind of focused on Instagram. I edit on Facetune so let's see how that goes. <laughs> Some of you guys actually think this background isn't real but it is. It's my bedroom wall and this is my bed <laughs> against my bedroom wall. So I'm just going to scroll through the photos that I took until I find one that I like. Something that I think would be good for Instagram. So usually Instagram likes things that are like like quite eye-catching okay i'm gonna go with this one for instagram okay so we're in facetune so the first things that i do is i put a filter on it first of all and it's not like some crazy filter i usually use one of these three so it's either sunset dawn or peach i try to stick to the same three for each of my posts because i want my feed to have like an overall appearance i want people to kind of see a picture and like recognize that it's one of mine which is like one of the key elements to building your own kind of brand i guess and then what i like to 
do is I just kind of like to brighten things. Then I'm gonna zoom in on my face and see if I can find any like imperfections. I feel like I can change certain imperfections without changing the overall mood of the photo or without kind of like catfishing too hard. I'm definitely like exposing myself right now. But I think it's important to expose yourself. You know, sometimes I forget. I'm like, oh, everybody knows what Facetune is. But you know, sometimes they don't. And sometimes you get so good at this that people don't even know what you've done. So I have like a lot of redness on my chest right now. I don't know why I'm having like a bit of a breakout on my chest. And I feel like it just, it's like an easy target. So, you know, I don't want to open myself up to trolls and things. So I'm just going to cover that up. So yeah, I just go over and I just cover up little imperfections like that. I like to whiten my eyes as well. Like the whites on my eyes. So I'll go over and I'll just brighten up my eyes a bit. Sometimes I do brighten my actual eye colour as well. So I had the contact lenses in today and they actually look brighter in real life, I think. So I'm just going to brighten them a little bit. I feel like photos can look really dull if you forget about your eyes too much. Like your eyes need to be bright. Otherwise, it just looks like the lighting was off. If you want to look like the spotlight's on you, then obviously your eyes are going to be bright and there's probably going to be a reflection in your eyes. You can go over to this little function as well and you can add detail to the areas that you want to stand out more. So I just detail my eye makeup, my eyes themselves, because I want them to kind of be like a focal point. So just add detail. I like to do like a little bit in my eyebrows. My jewellery. You know, I didn't waste all this money on jewellery just so that it wasn't in detail. Let's add some detail to my twists. And you guys can see where I've added detail to with this. That's the details I've added more detail here. Sometimes I detail my lips just to make them look a bit shinier. You know, I think I might just soften the skin on my forehead a little bit because you guys can see everything right now. Like that's more than what your eyes need to see. I think it's fine. You can smooth your skin a little bit because if you think about it, like in real life, nobody ever gets the chance to analyze your skin like this in real life like in real life you're just going to be like a fleeting motion you're going to walk past you're going to be moving around you're going to be moving your face you're going to be doing this that and the next thing and you're going to have expression and you're going to have life in your face and no one is actually going to spend time like extracting every detail of your face so you have a photograph and suddenly everyone's like yeah but look at the imperfections look at her pores if you think about it nobody spends as much time analyzing your appearance as you do you are your own worst critic i'm not gonna give anyone the chance to kind of analyze me even more than i analyze myself sometimes i add a bit more glow i think i won't with this one though because this one is a makeup photo this is about some vegan makeup that i tried so it's important to kind of try to stay true to how the makeup actually turned out oh baby girl we glow it's so important to know these things and to know that this kind of thing goes on in social media man i look too skinny <laughs> Okay, so that's the photo that I've just edited. So that's what I that's how I edit them. Sometimes I'll go over to an app like Kooji Cam or um, Pixar and I'll just add some graphics or something like that. But only on rare occasions, maybe I'll just add like some film scratches or something like that. That's literally how I edit things for Instagram, for my thumbnail. Well done, guys. You made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and got some value from it. If you did, please thumbs it up. Also subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications if you don't want to miss anything else. I haven't made one of these videos ever before so if you enjoyed it please let me know in the comments section. Also if you feel like you want to keep on learning and you want to join the Skillshare community then don't forget to click the link in the description. It's limited offers. It's right down there. Everything else that I've mentioned, everything that I use is always linked in the description so make sure you don't miss them. Also get me on Instagram for the blessings and the breakdowns and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!